Welcome to Symantec's Norton Security. My name is Becky Wiegand, and I'm your host for today's event. I'm the Webinar Program Manager here at TechSoup, and I've been with the organization for six and a half years. Prior to that, spent a decade at small nonprofits in Washington, D.C. and Oakland, California, where I was regularly the person that had to decide on which tech software and tools we implemented at our office, including tools like Symantec. So I'm happy to be your host and hope that you will find today's event informing and helpful in making the best decisions for your nonprofit's technology. Also joining us is Aaron Hansen, and he is joining us from Symantec where he is the lead in the America's product marketing for the Norton segment. For the past six years at Symantec, he has served consumers and small businesses in delivering solutions to help them protect their digital information. Prior to joining Symantec, he worked for nine years at Dell. So we're glad to have him as our primary speaker for today. You'll also see a number of people in the chat window who can assist you with your questions and any technical issues through the webinar. We have Jamie Barclay from Symantec who is joining us. We also have Allison Bliss, Bevan Garrett, Kevin Lowe, and Ali Bezdikian who are all from TechSoup who can be on hand to help answer your questions and help you with those tech issues if you experience any. A quick look at today's agenda. We'll do an introduction to TechSoup just so we've got everybody on the line by the time we start with the, the meat of the program. We'll do a couple of polls to get input from you, our users, and our participants on what you're most concerned about securing and how you're using security. That will help inform a little bit of what Aaron covers in his section. And so he'll talk about uh, Symantec and what, their, what Norton's goals are in helping you secure your technology. He'll talk about some of the current and future threats and tips to help you protect your organization. And then we'll introduce the new Norton security products and talk about how you can access the donations. So quickly, TechSoup is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are working toward the day when every nonprofit and library on the planet has the access to technology, resources, and knowledge to operate at their full potential. We do that in a variety of ways. Since 1987, we've been uh, working to distribute donations to nonprofits and charitable organizations around the world, more than 200,000 in more than 60 countries. And it keeps going up, so these numbers are already out of date. I think we're over $4 billion in IT expenses saved to the sectors around the world. So I'm proud to be a, a TechSoup user originally and now a TechSoup staff member. And you can find out more about our donation programs at TechSoup.org, which you can see on our homepage right now is an image of the new Norton Security and also a link to the security webinar in the uh, top featured area. So if you want to be looking at the products along with us, you're welcome to do so on our website right now. Now to the crux of why we're all here today, security. It's important stuff. We know we see hackers breaching celebrity cell phones, and we see you know, heart bleed and all of these viruses, and we see ransomware taking over people's data and locking it down out there. So take a minute and let us know on your screen right now. Click on one of those radio buttons, or you can actually click on more than one if you'd like, and tell us what your top security concerns are for this year. And if there's something else you'd like that's not on this list, go ahead and chat it into us. Because these you know, are real issues that you don't have to be a celebrity to be targeted uh, you know, by the various bots that are out there that are looking for vulnerabilities in your systems. They're not just looking for you know, the, uh, the holes in famous people or big company systems. They're looking for anything that they can exploit. And uh, you know, the technology is advancing really quickly, and companies like Symantec are doing, I think, a really great job of keeping on top of those and creating solutions that give you holistic coverage. So I'm going to give just a few more seconds for people to respond either in the chat or by clicking those links on their screen. Ramsey comments in the chat, and we know that you can't see the chat questions and comments, so if there are things that we think are particularly useful for everyone, we'll share those back out. But Ramsey in the chat comments that off-site cloud backup is a big security concern for 2015, and that is uh, you know, an ever-growing marketplace, and especially in the cloud. Uh, people are concerned about being there, but also we're all there already, so looking at how we can do that. Peter comments, uh, backup Windows PCs, so backup seems to be a 
a theme for both of those. So I'm going to go ahead and show the results of what people are most concerned about right now. And securing their Windows PCs is the top concern with 81% responding that that's number one. Being infected by viruses or malware is 78%. So those are the two biggest areas that people are concerned with right now. And so only about 18% of you are concerned with your Macs. So most of you I'm assuming based on this response are using PCs. So, um, and suffering data breaches is another big one. So thank you for taking part in that. And then one last question. This just helps inform kind of what you are using currently at your office. Do you currently enable, or even in 2015, do you plan on allowing your employees, staff, volunteers, board members, patrons to use their mobile devices to access your information or resources? So that could be accessing your network if you have one. That could be uh, making updates to your site or getting email onto their devices uh, from your domain. So go ahead and answer that one for us. And I'll give a few more seconds so that everybody has a chance to participate. We have around 50 people on the line right now. I'll give just a few more seconds so then we can move on and have Aaron talk to us about Norton and what they are doing and what their newest offer is. So here we go. So around almost 70% of you are allowing your staff and employees or board members uh, to access information and re resources with their mobile devices. So that's, and I'm sure that's ever growing. So with that, I'd love to have our presenter, Erin Hansen from Norton's product marketing team, come on to talk to us a little bit about what they are doing and share some tips on how you can secure your devices and information in this new year that we've just begun, and how you can do that using Norton Security. Thanks so much for joining us today, Aaron. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you very much, Becky. And uh, thanks everyone for attending. And um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, this is very near and dear to us at, at Norton. Um, you'll see you know, a lot about Norton is, is around empowerment. Uh, you see this tagline here of, of boldly go. And it's, it's really about uh, enabling our, our customers or our users to you know, really take advantage of all that this, this wonderful world has to offer uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of taking advantage of all the technology that, that's available to us today. It's really about enabling you to serve your mission and purpose uh, either as a, a nonprofit or, or a library or you know, whatever type of organization uh, goal that you've got. Uh, we're all about empowering that. So as, uh, as Becky mentioned, our, our agenda today, we're going to talk about the, the new Norton products, but really the, what I want to talk about first is an introduction to Norton as far as who we are, um, what we stand for. Uh, I want to talk about some latest trends that we see uh, in, in what we call the threat landscape out there, and also give you some tips and tricks and some, and some best practices on, on how to say, stay safe. Because using you know, a security solution is, is really only one piece or, or, or one element uh, as far as having a, a, a comprehensive approach in, in protecting your information. Uh, you know, I thought the poll question was interesting. Uh, the, the vast majority of you are planning on uh, allowing your uh, employees or staff to use their mobile devices, and so um, I think it's important that we'll talk a little bit around some of the, the mobile security risks that we see out there. Um, mobility is, is definitely taking off. Uh, and then we'll, we'll finish up with uh, what we're doing with our, our products and, and talk a little bit around some of the specific solutions uh, that you can leverage uh, to help protect uh, your organization. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you know this is this is kind of our um, our tagline, and it's it's really kind of our 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 marching orders, if you will. We are all about enabling our um, uh, customers to to boldly go, uh, because today it's really amazing when when you think about how much technology has advanced over just the past couple of years. Uh, the fact that we have all these mobile devices that are really like, like strong, powerful computers that we can hold in, in the palm of our hand. Um, it, it's, it's just it's really amazing the, the way that we're able to connect today. So we're all about enabling uh, that technology. You know, we're going to talk about some of the trends in, in the threat landscape. We're going to talk about some scary stuff that's out there. Um, and, and granted, there, there are some scary things going on out there, but that's, that's what we stand for. We're, we're here to help 
uh, protect you against all those threats that are out there. We do that with our software and our technology, but we also do it with uh, sessions like this where we go out and we, we, we uh, help inform uh, and, and educate around, you know, around ways that you can help stay protected. Uh, we believe that everyone has the right uh, to take full advantage of, of everything that this amazing new world has to offer. And, you know, as I think about it, I, I really feel like we're kind of on parallel paths here, right? I, I would, would imagine that um, you've got a very similar uh, type of uh, uh, theme with, 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 uh, with your go-to-market uh, go or with, with your marching orders as far as your organizations, as far as what your goals are. I imagine a lot of you out there are all about empowering uh, and, and have a, um, a message uh, that, that really, I think, aligns with this, is to enable people uh, to either take advantage of technology or whether you're a nonprofit. Um, you know, we're, we're here to help, um, uh, help work with you in, in service of, of your goals. Because uh, we believe that the, the free and, and the safe flow of information and ideas is really what's, what's going to move us uh, forward uh, in our society and our culture and, and e even with, uh, with commerce. And, and I'm, I'm proud to help support a lot of small business organizations uh, that, that, that are out there, help them stay protected. Uh, everything that we do is, is, is focused on protecting that freedom. And so, you know, we're known for consumer solutions. We're, we're all about protecting your, your families and your kids as they go online, but we're also uh, developing solutions to help uh, small businesses, to help nonprofits, to help uh, all organizations of, of all sizes to make sure that you're protected. So. Um, our mission is to make it easy also, uh, is make it easy to understand. Um, you know, things can get kind of complex when we start talking technology and, and the world of tech. And so, um, you know, one of the, the themes that you'll see as I start to talk about some of our solutions is that it's all about simplicity. Um, it's, it's all about making it easy for you to understand, for you, for you to use, and then, um, you know, get out of your way and, and enable you to go out and, um, and focus on what you need to do as, as far as advancing your goals or, or, or your mission forward. So uh, another thing we talk about is right for me protection. And so, and then this kind of goes to the mobile um, mobility piece that I mentioned earlier. It's, it's no matter how you connect, whether it's on a Windows PC, whether it's a Mac, whether it's a tablet or a smartphone, um, we are all about uh, keeping you safe and protected regardless of, of how you connect. You know, we're really known for, uh, for PC security, uh, but, uh, you know, given, and the, the poll uh, kind of alluded to this, given the, the explosion in mobile, you know, we recognize that we need to protect uh, mobile devices as well. So that's just a little bit about us um, as far as what we do here at Norton, kind of what we stand for, kind of our, our rallying cry, if you will. Um, to kind of transition to our next topic, I was going to talk about some of the latest trends that we see in, in the threat landscape, and I kind of have it, you know, bucketed into, into three areas here. Um, one is around uh, the evolving threats that we see, uh, that we see from, from the hackers and, and the bad guys that, that, that are out there that, that want to steal your data. Uh, talk a little bit around just some vulnerabilities um, that we see. And then I'll kind of finish and talk about uh, mobility and, and what you can do to help um, uh, help stay safe when you're using your, your mobile devices and when you're allowing your staff or volunteers to use their mobile devices to, um, to access your information. So the first thing I want to call out is that um, nobody, no organization, nobody is too small to be a target uh, for, the, for the hackers that are out there. Um, over the past couple years, we have seen the uh, targeted attacks at smaller organizations increase. Um, and we consider a small organization anywhere from one to 250 employees or, or staff or, or volunteers. Um, and this is a message that I talk about with a lot of our small business customers uh, because a lot of these smaller organizations or small businesses um, have kind of a mindset that, well, I'm, I'm a really small organization. Uh, you know, what sort of data do I have that, that, um, that a hacker would want? Right? We, we hear about the target breach in the news. We hear about you know, Home Depot. We saw the Sony uh, hack recently. Right? All these big name companies make the news. And so I think it kind of lulls a lot of smaller organizations into you know, kind of a sense of, of complacency around, uh, around protection. The, if, if you take anything away from this uh, session today, it's to you know, walk away with the, the mindset or with the idea that uh, you as a small organization are certainly a target. In fact, you are increasingly being targeted. The bad guys see you as a soft target. 
Uh, we find a lot of small organizations don't really take um, security seriously. Uh, they don't take a lot of steps to, um, to maintain their, um, their security posture. And it's important to note that you have data that's, that's important either to the hackers uh, or, or to yourself, and, and the hackers recognize that. And we'll talk a little bit around some of these new ways that they're kind of being sneaky and devious to, um, to uh, use your data um, and, and your value of your data um, against you. So, so really kind of biggie here is, you know, walk away with the mindset that you have data that's, um, if it's valuable to you, it's valuable to the, to the bad guys that are out there. So, you know, our first tip here that I'll talk about is, um, you know, it, it's, it's educating your employees, staff, and volunteers. You know, the number one thing to take in consideration when it comes to protecting your information is the human factor, is, is the human element. So the, the good starting point is to, you know, have a policy in place to, um, to manage uh, and to really have some guidelines as far as what is acceptable use of, um, of your online resources. Um, so consider having some sort of overarching policy that's going to govern electronic communications. Uh, even consider um, the appropriate use of social networks um, in your environment. Uh, and then with these policies established, um, you know, help to educate your employees uh, around you know, the reasons that you have these policies. And, and um, you, know, you could even take this presentation that we're going to provide to you guys today back to your volunteers and staff and be able to have a discussion with them around the importance of uh, just being aware. Uh, it's, it's, it's really an awareness thing. So tip number one is to, is to be aware of, of the threats that are out there and to you know, consider having policies in place and adhering to those policies when it comes to your uh, employees and, and, their, and your staff uh, or your volunteers and all, you know, in, in terms of uh, access to your information. So switching gears, um, I want to talk a little bit around some of the vulnerabilities and, and the threats that we see out there. Um, you know, and, and Becky alluded to this earlier uh, around vulnerabilities. She mentioned as an example the, the heart bleed uh, vulnerability that was uncovered uh, in uh, it was around mid you know 2014 or so, which was a uh, basically a, a vulnerability is like an open door or an unlocked window. Um, inherently in um, in software. Uh, there are, you know, vulnerabilities will arise, which is essentially a, a piece of code that might have been overlooked or that it's, it's basically uh, uh, an open window or an unlocked door in, in the piece of software that enables a, a hacker to exploit it. And so uh, that was essentially what happened with Heartbleed. Heartbleed was a, like an open door uh, in some code with regard to websites that allowed the hackers to go in and be able to exploit that open door and be able to inject some, some malicious code out there. So, so one of the things to take in, my, take in consideration and, and why um, you should use a, a, a full-blown security solution, uh, either, from, you know, either from Norton or, for, or if you're using a, you know, a top-tier uh, solution out there, is you know, the, the, these vulnerabilities are out there, and if, you're, and if you don't have the appropriate protection in place, um, they can exploit those vulnerabilities. Uh, we found in, in 20, uh, 2014, I'm sorry, 2013, one in eight websites had uh, critical unpatched vulnerabilities. And this was an increase of 25% over what we saw um, in 2012. So we actually find that the, the hackers and the bad guys, they no longer uh, need to host their own servers. They don't need to even set up their own websites anymore. They can go out and find these vulnerabilities in legitimate websites and they can inject their code in there and then as an unsuspecting um, uh, 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 web surfer, you may visit this site and it, it could be a legitimate site and uh, you, you, know, you could potentially uh, download some malicious code if you don't have the appropriate um, uh, antivirus or, or um, security software in place. So, so that, that's, that's a, a big consideration to, um, uh, to take into account uh, when you're out there uh, or, you know, even if you're hosting your own site, this is another uh, good call out is, is to make sure that you um, have your, your website, all the latest updates, all the latest patches. Uh, you, one of the things we talk about in security software is to keep it updated uh, all the time. You, you are only as, as safe as, the, as your latest update. So, so keep your websites updated uh, if, if any of you out there um, host your own websites. So um, that's a little around vulnerabilities. So, as I mentioned, you know, vulnerability is an open door, unlocked window that allows people or allows the, the hackers to, um, to exploit it. And they exploit that with things like, like malware, 
which is essentially you know software that is designed to you know be mischievous or, or cause havoc to your computer. So as we see um, malware continue to evolve, maybe you guys have heard this term. And hopefully none of you have been impacted by this, but we've seen a new threat emerge last year called ransomware. And it's essentially malware that does kind of like what it says. It, it essentially um, holds your data hostage uh, for a ransom. So um, to take a step back, uh, the pre precursor to ransomware, and, and you guys may remember this, um, we used to see fake antivirus. Um, and, and you know maybe you guys used to see this before where you'd see some sort of pop-up come up on your computer. Maybe you you know, visited a site or maybe you downloaded a, a program or something that, you know, might have had some of this malicious code in it. And what happened was it would pop up the screen, say, hey, uh, we've found a, a whole bunch of infections on your system, you know, click here and either, you know, purchase some, you know, some, some bogus software or, you know, when you click uh, fix, it actually um, in, installs some, some malware on your system. Um, the, the way malware works, especially with these kind of attacks, is when, um, when you don't realize that it's fake. When, when you know, the, the gig is up and when everybody realizes it's fake, the scam fails. In fact, I'd, I'd venture to say everybody's security IQ out there is, is probably to the point where if you saw some kind of oddball, random-looking software like this pop up, you'd probably say, hey, this is a fake, this is a dupe, you know, I'm, I'm just going to ignore it. So um, what we've seen with, the, with, with ransomware was actually it was first delivered, you know, kind of like fake antivirus, but it was actually delivered first as a fake uh, notification from law enforcement um, that was basically dupe you into um, fearing that you had, you know, somehow committed some sort of crime or, or something online. So uh, this was the, the first piece, um, the first precursor to ransomware was they would basically pop up the screen. It would really be really scary looking. Um, you know, your computer has been uh, uh, locked here due to suspicious or, or illegal activities, and you need to pay us a fine, and, and we'll go ahead and, and unlock your computer. Um, you know, the fines weren't, weren't too big. I mean, it was like $100, $400 a victim. Um, and, you know, the bad guys, um, you know, they, they got a lot of... Um, a lot of good profits out of this because um, they were able to, you know, scare a lot of people into paying this this quote unquote fine uh, that was, you know, really kind of a ransom. So what we see now with ransomware is it's really turned vicious. And you, maybe some of you have heard of CryptoLocker. This was the the latest ransomware or the the real big ransomware that we saw in 2014, where. Uh, what the malware does is uh, if you were to get a piece of this crypto locker or, or somehow um, install it, it would actually lock you out of your own computer or uh, lock you away from your data. It would actually encrypt your information to where um, you couldn't access it. And what the bad guys would do is they would make you pay a ransom in order to unlock uh, your data and be able to get access back to your data. So this kind of goes to what I mentioned earlier around um, – you know, if you, have, if you feel like you're a small organization, you feel like you don't have data, you don't have assets that the bad guys want, you know, that may be true in some cases, but it's, it's information that, that, that's important to you. You know, if you think about it as a consumer, uh, you know, your pictures of your kids or, um, you know, uh, other digital information that you've got on your computer, maybe financial files and that sort of thing, um, you know, all that may, you know, pictures of your kids, for example, it's, it's not really uh, very valuable to, to a hacker, but it's valuable to you, and they recognize that. And so what they're doing is, is this, this crypto locker locks out your, uh, locks, locks you away from, from getting access to your files. And they make you pay a ransom, and, you know, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, uh, you do actually, uh, you won't get your, your, your data back even after you pay the fine. Uh, I actually was uh, uh, talking to a small business owner, a very small organization, and they, they paid the fine. They had to pay $500 uh, in order to get a key to unlock their data. Um, the hacker was somewhat ethical in the case because the, they were able to um, unlock their data uh, with the key that they were given. Uh, but, um, you know, think about that. As a small business owner or even as, as, as you as a, either a nonprofit or, or other type of organization, you know, that's $500 that could have been put towards uh, advancing, you know, your goals uh, or, or helping to, you know, to, to, to build your business, right? So, um, so the bad guys get that, and um, so that's, that's um, something to be aware of. 
And having you know something like a Norton software or you know some sort of multi-layered security solution um, is is going to help prevent uh, these these sorts of attacks. Um, we've seen we've seen CryptoLocker. We've we've got um, the um, the virus definitions that um, that are going to help help keep that at bay. Which leads me to our second tip is to which may seem you know kind of um, uh, kind of redundant here, but it's it's to protect yourself. It's to use a a modern, uh, comprehensive uh, security solution that's going to include you know multiple layers of protection and to keep it updated. Um, and when I mean multiple layers, you know, I've kind of listed some of the layers here. Um, you know, antivirus, that's, that's really kind of what we're known for. That's one layer. Uh, having a solution that includes a firewall, that, that's another layer. Uh, including browser protection, including uh, what we call reputation-based tools, where we're able to uh, be able – reputation-based tools enable us to identify threats um, uh, before they've been recognized by uh, antivirus programs. And so using something that provides multiple layers um, of protection. I also want to call out that you know, there's a lot of small organizations and uh, small businesses that use um, free antivirus. Um, and you generally, your, your free solutions are only going to include one layer of protection. Usually it's just antivirus. And you know, there's kind of an old quote, if something is free, then you are the product. And you know, you're paying with you know, more than likely um, some sort of other currency like, you know, maybe your data or, you know, maybe they include ads in, in their product. So the call out here is to really avoid, you know, using free solutions. And, and, and in fact, with the, the don donation program from, from TechSoup, uh, you, you, you know, you get some really, really attractive pricing. You shouldn't need to resort to, to using free solutions. Use something that's going to give you um, multiple layers of protection like we have here. So, um, so the bad guys, you know, uh, they're they're following where the users are going, and we find that the you know the the uh, the, the spam is a percentage of email, for example, and maybe you guys have noticed this. Uh, we're not seeing as much spam come across email anymore. Uh, what they're doing is they're shifting their focus over to you know over to where the users are, which is on social media, uh, on mobile devices. So you can see a couple of examples here. You know, back with uh, with the tragic passing away of Robin Williams last year, uh, we saw a um, a lot of um, uh, uh, activity around using you know that that incident to um, to introduce malware. So you can see here, you know, maybe if you were to click that link or that video, it may you know it may install some malware. It may you know try to take some information out of um, out of your social media sites. Uh, you can see a couple of other examples here on the page. There was an Instagram uh, uh, threat that was out there that you know somebody would basically send a request via Instagram, and they would include a link that would uh, download malware. Um, that little screenshot of the phone there that was actually on my own personal phone, and you know I get these from time to time where I get kind of these you know these weird cryptic messages. Um, that you know could include malware with them. So again, I think a lot of people would see, especially like these these unsolicited texts and maybe an unsolicited email. I think a lot of people's security IQ is is pretty good in that regard. But um, you know, to err on the side of caution, would would advise to you know take some of this information uh, you know to your employees, staff, uh, or you know encourage them to listen to the recording and just help educate them on you know on on some of these some of these scams that we're seeing out there when it comes to social media, when it comes to, um, to mobile devices. So, which, which is you know, a good segue into our tip number three here, which is to really think, um, think about it before you click. So you know, never view or, or open um, email attachments um, unless you are expecting them or, or you trust the sender. Uh, you know, the, the bad guys are really doing their homework these days. They're, they're doing their research, and they're really getting good at being able to make uh, emails and attachments look very legitimate. You know things like invoices or or POs or or those sorts of things. So just think think about uh, before you click. Uh, be cautious uh, when clicking on URLs and in social media, even when coming from your friends. Uh, some of these threats are designed to be you know when you click on them, it immediately sends it out to your entire um, entire network that makes it look like it come from you. So just just be suspicious, um, especially when there's a call to action. Uh, to you know, have to share content before viewing it, or to, for example, click like before you can actually access the content. Just be really suspicious of that. 
uh, and especially around current events. Um, you can use you know search engine. You probably heard of Snopes.com. You can use a search engine to you know hey is this was this Robin Williams you know suicide video supposedly is this you know you can do you can Google that and, and you know probably find out pretty quick that um that it's a fake. So again, it just goes back to the human element and being aware and and being educated as far as what we see out there. So. Uh, another tip kind of a in these regards, um, and this may seem, uh, you know, kind of elementary here, but it, it's to use uh, strong passwords. Uh, the, the most important two passwords are those for your email and for your social network accounts. Uh, generally, those can really unlock a lot of other um, access to resources. So uh, make them complex. Uh, the more complex, the better. Um, use, you know, a mix of different characters, letters, um, you know, try to avoid just using words straight out of the dictionary. Um, replace like an S with a dollar sign, for example. Um, the more complex, the, the harder they are to, um, to hack. Um, you know, use different websites for different sites. Change them regularly. And I have an example here. A lot of sites are now offering two-factor authentication. Um, a lot of banks are doing this now. Where, um, and this is, you know, I, I see this a lot with, um, uh, with, with banks where you'll log into the bank website and it may actually say, hey, you know what, um, we haven't seen you log on in a while, uh, we need to send you a verification code to make sure you are who you say you are. And so they'll send you a text with a code. And that's a, a, an example of, of two-factor authentication. It, it's two ways that, um, that you can enter in information to access the site. Uh, this is an example from Apple. Um, Apple has started to offer um, two-factor authentication for Apple accounts. Uh, you know, PayPal is another example where they offer um, two-factor authentication as well. So, um, and, and really two-factor just means it's two uh, uh, pieces of information that you have to enter to gain access to the site. A password is one factor, and then uh, getting a code, you know, texted to yourself or emailed to yourself, that's the second factor. So that's just um, another, uh, another layer to, um, uh, to, to make sure that you're secure using passwords. Um, we also offer a, um, a password tool. Uh, this is Norton Identity Safe. This is included as part of our Norton software. Uh, it's actually available as a free offering as well. Um, if you go to identitysafe.norton.com, you can access this, and it's a way to manage all your passwords. Um, it actually has a password generator. So if you, um, you know, want to uh, have it help you create complex passwords, a great site. I, Literally, I, I use it every day. Um, it, it, it really helps keep all your passwords organized. Um, and essentially, all you need to know is, is the password for, for your vault, and, and you can access um, and, and be able to manage your passwords that way. So another good, another good resource there. So let me switch gears. I'll talk briefly about mobile, and then we'll move into the, the new Norton. So um, you know, when it comes to mobile devices, and, and you know, um, shouldn't be a big, big surprise, I'm, I'm assuming, to a lot of you, given just the... Um, how, how pervasive mobile devices are. It's the fact that um, you know, the bad guys are going to follow where the users are, and the users are moving um, to mobile. Um, the majority of Internet traffic these days is, is on mobile devices, and so that's where, that's where the bad guys are going. When it comes to mobile, though, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, um, it's, it's a mindset thing. Um, what we find, and this is based on um, surveys that we've done here at Norton, is you know we find that people have a pretty high security IQ when it comes to PCs, you know, um, and so you can kind of see that on that very top row there. Um, you know, 90% of people are going to delete suspicious emails from somebody that they don't know uh, on a PC. But if you look on the on that second row, that's on tablets, and if you look on that third row, that's um, that's smartphones, right? We find that people are much more likely to click on suspicious emails uh, if you're using a, a mobile device. Which is kind of it's kind of mind-boggling in a way because these, you know, these these mobile phones and these tablets. I mean, when you think about it, they're extremely powerful um, computers. And so we we just find that um, when it comes to mobile security, it's a mindset thing. So if if you are allowing your um, employees or staff or volunteers uh, to bring their own devices, and you may have heard that acronym BYOD, to be able to bring their own mobile device uh, to access information. Um, you know, maybe uh, that, that's when having a policy in place or at least educating them on, on the mobile threats is, is very important, um, is to really, you know, help us increase the security IQ when it comes to mobile devices. 
Um, <clears throat> another thing we see is that um, a lot of people, and this goes to the kind of security IQ and mobile devices, is that a lot of users, um, you know, they, they don't even use basic precautions like a password on a mobile device. Um, only a quarter, roughly, um, have some sort of security software solution uh, for a mobile device, and, and, and the vast majority of folks aren't aware that, that they exist. And so, um, so help us uh, take this message out and um, and help us to um, let's let's help to increase the mobile security IQ for for the employees and and to the staff and um, and to the the volunteers that are out there. Uh, this kind of speaks to the. Um, to the whole password piece, we actually did a, a study, uh, this is uh, probably about two years ago now, where we strategically lost um, 50 smartphones in, in public areas. So we actually installed tracking software on the, on the smartphones, kept them unlocked, and we dropped 50 of these in public places like um, train stations, um, Santa Monica Piers, we, we dropped some there. And the key findings from this was kind of scary. You know, almost all of them, 96% were accessed. Um, by the person that, that found the phone. Uh, the vast majority were, um, were accessed for personal related information, um, and only about 50% or so were contacted by the finder. So, you know, this curiosity, I, I think, you know, if, we were, if you were to find a phone, you know, I think it's just human nature, right? We would, you know, maybe see if it's open, and, um, you know, I think a lot of us would be really honest and probably access it to, in, in order to try to find the, the person who lost it. But um, just, just be aware that, um, um, these mobile devices, when you think about all the ways that they can access your information, um, it's very important that you keep them secured and really have the same type of mindset with mobile devices that you do for your, uh, for your Windows PCs. Um, so, you know, tip number five is around mobility. Um, it's to be mobile secure. So use, you know, secure your device, use a strong password, um, use a, um, a security solution, and, and we offer that with Norton. Uh, we, do, we do provide security solutions for your smartphones. Uh, just use caution. Um, think about um, you know, avoiding clicking on suspicious links or, 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 or texts or those sorts of things when, um, when you're using mobile devices. Another biggie here is to only download apps from official sources like the Google Play or the iTunes, um, iTunes Store. Um, uh, we strongly recommend they do a pretty good job of, of vetting a lot of the apps that are out there. So. Um, use those um, those official sites so okay so now let me let me transition and talk a little about around what we do at Norton some of our solutions um, you can just see briefly here you know Norton uh, by the numbers um, you know we have been at this for over 20 years um, and we have you know one of the largest uh, global intelligence networks when it comes to uh, seeing the threats that are out there and developing the technology um, to really help keep a lot of these these threats at bay. So, um, you know, when it when it comes to this, you can kind of just see some of these staggering number here numbers here as far as the number of consumers that we protect, the number of, of attacks that we block. Um, you know, this is um, this is what we do. This is this is our our DNA. So, um, <clears throat> to that end, though, um, you know, we we've, we've also kind of made things a little difficult uh, in the past. Um, you know, we just made it too difficult to choose security software. Um, and, you know, you can kind of see some of, the, some of the qualifications, really some of the hoops that we would make people jump through in order to select which, which you know, Norton um, software you needed. Um, you know, maybe, you know, you, 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 you think of Norton Antivirus, um, you know, or maybe you think of our Norton Internet Security product. I mean, we were pretty guilty of this. If you look at what we used to offer, we just had way too many solutions um, uh, to pick from. Uh, and so, if, you know, if you've been um, in a retail store, you know, in the, in the past or something, you know, you might have been just bombarded by this this wall of yellow. And you know, well, what do I really need? Um, I need protection. Is internet security right? Is is this Norton 360 multi-device right? Um, you know, what what sort of solution do I need? So, what we've done, and we actually um, uh, introduced a, a new Norton solution just this past uh, September which is we've essentially consolidated all those various offerings into one solution uh, or to one service uh, with, uh, you know, a couple of Write For Me offerings. So we now offer uh, Norton Security, uh, and we also offer a Norton Small Business product, both available as part of the TechSoup uh, donation program. So these are all includes, you know, all the best of Norton. So we no longer ask you what level of protection you want, what kind of devices you want to protect, 
um, it's 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 all in there. And so essentially, you need to think about do we, you know do I need just a, a Norton Security solution or would I need a Norton Small Business solution? And I'll talk briefly um, a little bit around the difference between those here in just a minute. But again, it's 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 the best of Norton. So we, we've got rid of, for example, Norton Antivirus, which was kind of the the good protection. Uh, then we had Norton Internet Security, which was kind of the better protection, and then we had our Norton 360, which was the best. We've we really kind of gotten away from this, you know, good, better, best type of methodology, and we basically said, you know what, it, it all should be in there. So regardless of Norton Security or Norton Small Business, you get it all. So you get the anti-malware, you get the firewall, you get spam and phishing protection, you get our cloud technologies, you get all those layers of protection uh, that we talked about. Um, so you get multiple layers of, of protection, and it's for all the devices um, that, that you run. So for example, both of these are multi-device. At a minimum, with Norton Security, you can protect five devices, and it's any combination of devices. So you know, I know the poll question earlier, a lot of you want to protect Windows PCs. We can protect those. Uh, we can protect Macs. Uh, if you have a mobile Android or, or an iOS device, we can protect those as well. Uh, we, any, any combination of devices that, that add up to five, we can protect with, um, with the Norton Security um, solution. You can even um, retire old devices, so if you're using Norton Security on some Windows PCs and you decide to migrate over to Mac or you decide to buy a new computer for Windows 8, you just move that license over to your new device and, and you're all protected. So you can, it, very flexible, you can move them around. Um, and again, it covers all the major operating systems that are out there um, with these solutions. So, so as I mentioned, Norton Security is going to give you protection for up to five devices. And, and really the key difference here between Norton Security and with Norton Small Business is it really comes down to management and, and being able to, to grow your devices. So if you're a smaller environment, about five systems or so, uh, Norton Security is, is the way to go. If you have more devices, if you need to support um, you know, 10 devices or 20 devices, or, or if you want the flexibility to be able to add more devices in the future, then Norton Small Business is, is that solution. Uh, at the end of the day, they include you know, all the same levels of protection. It's, it's all the same technology. You, you don't sacrifice your level of protection. It just really comes down to, um, to the management. Do you want to have a little bit more capability to add more devices have you know be able to to manage and monitor devices then that you know that's that's when the um, the Norton small business solution comes into play. We also offer semantic solutions as part of the TechSoup uh, donation program, and uh, some of you may be aware of the semantic endpoint protection products as well. Um, and and really the key difference between these two is you know Norton small business is going to scale upwards of 20 or 25 devices or so. What we find is, is when organizations kind of get beyond that, you know, 20-ish threshold, then that's when, um, you know, you, you likely may need a solution that's going to provide you a little bit more robust control, uh, monitoring, and, and management. So that's really where the, uh, the semantic endpoint protection comes into play. So if you need to be able to kind of customize your protection policies, you know, do group management, um, you know, get very detailed types of reporting, you know, that's when something like a semantic endpoint protection would, would be a better fit. Um, but if you need to protect, you know, your Windows PCs, your Macs, your smartphones, your tablets, uh, and, and, and get that protection for, you know, around 20, you know, volunteers or employees or what have you, then the Norton Small Business is, um, is the way to go. So uh, I'll leave you here with a couple of resources um, for more information. Um, you know, just about all those tips that I would referenced um, are all from um, blogs that we've, or, or tweets that we've done or posts that we've done on Facebook. So if you want to follow us on Facebook, there's the link there, or at, at Twitter or Norton.com. Um, there's a, a lot of good security resources um, at Norton.com. Um, and I think with that, I'm going to hand it over to Becky, and she's going to uh, help you with um, the, the TechSoup platform and, and help educate you on, on how you can, um, you can get these through TechSoup. So uh, Becky, I'll, I'll hand it back over to you there. Great. Thank you so much for that, Aaron. Really useful tips, and it's great to know that Norton has really been you know, taking the feedback from not only our community, but all of these communities around the world that use your products and helping to combine the best features of many of your products into single solutions. So I'm happy for that, and I think it's a much simpler option for people. So just wanted to show quickly uh, you know, where to get donated Norton through TechSoup. 
Um, I can also show it on our desktop or on share my desktop so that you can see on screen where to get it. But this is what the Symantec product catalog landing page looks like on our site. And you'll see down at the bottom of the page the link. It's just TechSoup.org slash Symantec dash catalog. And you'll see that Norton Security donations are now available for uh, eligible nonprofits and libraries in single, 5-device, 10-device, and 20-device license packs. And you can see the different prices on these pages. And then the enterprise products are also available, which he mentioned, endpoint protection. Uh, and so you can see the different options. I'll show it live on my desktop so that you can see what it looks like to get there and uh, find your way there yourself so that you can um, you know, look at the different options and see what might best fit your organization's needs. So it will take just a moment for that to pop up, hopefully. And I can then show you where to find them. And if you go to our homepage, which hopefully should load up here in just a second, you can uh, see on TechSoup.org under the Get Products tab on the upper left side that um, it's still loading on my screen, so I'm just talking my way through it. But on that screen, um, you can browse by donor or partner. And so you wouldn't look for Norton on that list. So I hopefully you're seeing the TechSoup.org homepage right now. And on the Get Products and Services tab up in the upper left, you want to look at Get uh, Browse Catalog by Donor or Provider. And even though we've been talking about Norton products today, it is Symantec that runs those programs. You come all the way over here to Symantec and select that. And that takes you to the Symantec Catalog page that I had screenshots of before. Uh, if you're not yet a TechSoup, uh, in TechSoup system as a registered organization, I would recommend doing that if you're a 501c3 nonprofit, a church, a library, uh, because lots of donation programs may be available to you. And so here is where you can see the Symantec Donation Program page, and you can click this big blue button to browse the different products. It defaults to landing on the new Norton products on this page. So hopefully you are seeing that. And you can see that there is a drop-down box here where you can look at those enterprise options as well. So you, know, you can look for small and medium enterprise products or large enterprise products. So if you are looking to uh, manage security and cover devices over 20 or 25 like uh, what Aaron had alluded to, that's where you'd want to look for those. But for those of the, you that are looking for the new Norton Security and you think you don't need more than 20 devices of coverage, this is where you will find those. And you can see the admin fees. You can view the details of each of those products. So say I have 5 staff people and we want to cover each of their computers and uh, their tablets that they may use for going to conferences. And so I would need 10 devices worth of coverage. So I would want to get the subscription for 10 devices. And that's a $20 admin fee. You can see that it's available. You can see that it's a downloaded product through the donation program. So you wouldn't physically get a box like this in the mail. And you can look here to see what it includes, what's in the latest version, links on how to choose and how to obtain the product all of these details listed here. And then you can also look at system requirements. So if you are putting this onto older, older equipment or hardware, you'd want to click through and look at this uh, on Norton's site um, to see what the requirements are to make sure that there is compatibility there. And then if you are not sure if you are eligible, this Eligibility and Restrictions tab might answer some of those questions for you around how to access these donations. And just be, keep in mind that you can access one security Norton, or I'm sorry, one Symantec Norton Security product, either Norton Small Business or Norton Security, and up to 20 licenses for Norton Utilities within a fiscal year. So that's July 1st through June 30th. So if you have five staff people now, but you think you're expanding to 10, make sure to keep that in mind so that you're you're requesting as much as you need for the course of that fiscal year. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bounce this back. That's how to find those donations, and we hope that you'll look and read those details in the description and requirements so that you're not missing out um, and so that you're selecting the right products. I also want to show you really quickly that we do have some additional resources on TechSoup's site that can help you make uh, the best decisions uh, for you. And so 
uh, once again that's a link to the Symantec catalog. We have a whole security articles and how to section. Uh, we have webinars and other events that we've done, like this one, Online Safety for Nonprofits and Libraries is a webinar on security and safety online. We have a lot of different resources on our site, and you can always ask in our community forums too. We have a whole forum thread that's just dedicated to security. So if you want to ask about people's experiences in their organizations, or post a specific question about yours, it's a great place to do it to make sure that you're getting the best product for your needs. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start fielding some of these questions that have lined up in the queue. So Aaron, we've got a question from Scott who asks, uh, does Identity Safe work on other platforms like Android and iOS devices? And can you sync devices? Do you know about that one? I know that's not your specific area of focus, but you may know more about Identity Safe than I do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, Identity Safe will work on mobile devices. There's an app um, on the, the uh, iOS App Store. Um, I believe there's also one for Android, and for certain it works on Windows systems. Um, I, I'd have to go back and double check. I don't believe that there's a, a, a plug-in for the Apple uh, a Mac platform, but uh, it's essentially a cloud-based um, uh, a, a password management system. So if you have access to a browser, you can log in with your Norton account um, and access it. Um, kind of a shameless plug here, I, I use an iOS device, and um, it, it will sync all your passwords across your devices. So if I access Identity Safe using my iOS app, uh, I'll be able to access all the passwords, whether I enter, entered them on a Windows system uh, or on a, on a Mac system. So um, short answer, or I guess kind of a long answer to say, yes, there, there are multiple apps out there for Identity Safe. Great, thank you. Uh, Tommy asks, can you know, can you get a bundle of protection for PC and mobile devices? And and I'll just go ahead and answer that. That this is what we're talking about. That you can access device uh, multiple device coverage with Norton uh, Security or with Norton Small Business. So that's what we uh, just looked at, and it will cover PCs and mobile devices. Um, we also have a question from. Uh, Let's see, from Thomas, he asks, does uh, Norton Small Business facilitate remote monitoring or remote renewals? So uh, Norton Small Business will support uh, remote monitoring to a certain extent. You can uh, be able to um, look at all the devices that you have under protection, and you'll be able to see the status of those devices. Um, so you'll be able to see kind of a green check mark if it's all protected, if it's got the latest definitions, or you may see a red X indicating that, hey, this maybe hasn't been online in a while, or maybe it just doesn't have the, um, the latest you know, virus definition. So you can also um, uh, you know, send email invites to people to get uh, Norton on there. So to a certain extent, um, you can certainly monitor uh, and manage um, your, your remote devices using the, uh, the Norton Small Business software. Great. Um, so Ramsey asks that, or says, we're using Norton 360 on 28 computers and utilize Norton Cloud Backup. How does that work with the new products? Is there a Cloud Backup included in any of these, or is there a way to use those together? Do you have any recommendations for their setup? Sure. Um, and that's kind of where the, the difference between Norton Small Business and, and like, say, the previous Norton 360 went, because with with, uh, with Norton 360, you might have been able to get it with three PCs or, or with five, and that was kind of you know kind of your limit. And otherwise, you're you're kind of you know doing one-to-one -one management of those systems. Uh, versus Norton Small Business was designed to be more of one-to-many, so the the business owner or the administrator could easily you know send out those emails for the employees or you know send out those emails to those devices to get protection. Uh, so from a management perspective, that was kind of why we created um, Norton Small Business. Now you touched on backup, and um, we, we do not yet include backup as part of the Norton Small Business solution. Um, backup is something that we're, we're certainly looking at uh, for the Norton Small Business um, product. Now um, in terms of full disclosure, we also have a Norton Security um, with backup solution, um, but that is not included as part of the TechSoup um, program. What we offer today is, is Norton Security. Uh, and the Norton um, Small Business um, Solution. So uh, hopefully that helps answer that question. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I think hopefully at least that gives them some place to start and, and move forward. Um, so a couple of folks are asking about renewals. And so this may not be a question that, that 
you know the answer to, you may. Uh, so I'll ask it, and if you don't, I can also chime in with what I know. Um, so Tom asks, uh, or says, I have a copy of Norton 360 from TechSoup last July. Do I have to wait until this year's July 1st to get Norton Small Business? And I believe that the answer would be yes, that it's one of these products per fiscal year. So from July 1st to June 30th, if you have already requested one since last uh, July 1st, then you would have to wait until after this year's fiscal year end to make another request for your organization. Um, but on that note, Thomas asks, you know, or says, annual renewals are time consuming. Can these be done centrally or remotely? Is there a way to manage renewals that you are aware of? I don't know that there is well, through our system. Well, that's, that's what we've done with Norton Small Business is to make it essentially one license, if you will, that you can have all your, you know, all your computers be able to kind of be synced as far as their, um, uh, their, their licenses are concerned, or their, the, the, um, the subscriptions, I should say, because it is a subscription that you're getting uh, for a year. So if you do have concerns around you know, having a lot of different devices, and if you're worried about those all having different expiration dates, then uh, you know, I'd, I'd suggest taking a look at the Norton Small Business because you can get it as a five-pack a 10-pack or, or a 20-pack, and all those 10 or 20 or 5 systems would all have the exact same subscription length, and you just need to you know, renew that um, once a year. So. Great. And so that is something you know, somebody else asked that they had requested this through us but didn't know how to renew it, and they pay for it separately for Norton 360, and that's the, the process is to come back to us and request that again on an annual basis to get renewal of that subscription. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We have um, Edward comments that they have a Norton free product that comes with Comcast, but Comcast now says they no longer support it. And so they're not sure if that's a good product or if they should be investing in something uh, through the TechSoup donation program. I'm imagining that the Comcast free product may be a consumer based or consumer grade product to protect your individual email, but I don't know that to be sure. Um, but if they're not supporting it, I would definitely, personally, I would recommend going to something that is supported. But Aaron, I'd love your take on that as well. Yeah, you know, we do provide Norton with some of the, um, uh, you know, the telcos or the internet service providers that are out there. Um, we do provide a Norton security suite as part of um, as part of Comcast. Um, it, it is essentially the same um, solution that you can get with. Um, with the Norton Security, um, however, I believe there are limitations on on how many devices or, or how many um, users um, that are out there. But if you're saying that your service provider is either, you know, changing it or um, or no longer supporting it, then um, yeah, I'd encourage you to take a look at, at the TechSoup site. And if you've done any kind of price comparisons, um, you know, you'll, you'll just find that um, there's it's 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 an incredible offer that you guys are able to get with TechSoup as far as if you compare it to like MSRP pricing out there. So, Right. And we are just about at time. And really with the, uh, the admin fees through TechSoup, the, the products are donated fully through Symantec. So they do the donation and TechSoup charges an administrative fee that's roughly it depends on the product donation, but it's usually 4 to 10% of what the retail value is. And so it is a huge saving to, savings to the sector. And that admin fee is paid to TechSoup to help continue our programs. And we are a nonprofit, so we're not making like money off it. So anyway, if you would like to learn more and talk more if we didn't have time to get to your questions, please go ahead and join us in our community forums at TechSoup.org slash community. There is a full thread that's just dedicated to security questions. I'm going to show this resource slide once more, and we'll send these links and as well as the ones that were mentioned during the webinar out in the follow-up email that you'll get in a little while. Lastly, I'd love to invite you to join us for upcoming webinars. We have one uh, or two actually next week, one on engaging volunteers as tech trainers in public libraries, and one that's going to be talking about how to make grants research simple. So if you're looking at uh, grant writing coming up and you need to research those grant makers, please join us for that. And then on the 29th we'll be talking about how to get a new tech plan in place for your mission-driven organization. So please join us for those. Thank you again, Erin, so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you to all of the folks on the back end who are helping answer questions. And thank you to you, our participants, for engaging with us and asking your great questions. Sorry if we didn't get to get to all of them today.
Lastly, thank you to ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor, who provides the use of this platform and the ReadyTalk 500 tool for us to provide these webinars to you on a weekly basis. You can learn more about their program at TechSoup.org slash ReadyTalk. And when your screen closes, please take a moment to complete the post-event survey so we can continue to improve our webinar programming. Thank you so much everyone. Have a terrific day. Bye-bye.